Hey guys, Midwest Picker here. I finally made the video how to ship or box glass when you sell it on eBay or online. Um, a lot of people have asked for this. I think um, Dumpster Diver Dad out in California, call him Triple D too, he's asked me and teased me about this because I've always promised I'm going to make it. Other people too have sent me requests. So I finally made that. That's the second half of the video. So that's coming up real quick. This is kind of a short video because for some reason sales are just not kicking at all. I listed, let's see, today's Monday, so Sunday I listed seven items all at the same time, hoping that would spur some sales because the rumor is if you list, you'll sell. I haven't sold anything since Saturday, so I don't know if that's true. Before I get into what's sold, maybe you guys can help me identify this thing. Um, it's kind of what it looks like here. I'll put a... I'll put a picture up here somewhere too, but um, it's about four inches long. It's cast iron. Um, I'm not sure what it is. I bought a giant jar from my secret thrift store full of nuts and bolts and screws and nails and lock washers and cotter pins. Just kind of those guy things that guys hoard. Um, it was $3 for like a, a gallon jug of these things. So I went through the whole thing separate them out into a um, kind of like these little bins or little compartments um, with the little trays and I separated all the little bits and pieces a lot of it was junk and worthless but this thing was right in the middle um, so again I'll put the picture up there help me identify this thing if you know what it is put it down in the comments below I have no idea what it is might have a little bit of value I think it's a part maybe part of a gate or something that latches so this looks like it could be maybe hinged where it goes like this and swings and then something hangs from here I, I don't know maybe a cast iron shepherd's hook type of thing who knows um so this is what's sold and then i'm going to show you the um video on how to box or package glass for shipping so this is what's sold on ebay not a lot like i said on saturday i sold some stuff um this is Villery and Bach again. I'll put a picture up here. Little saucers. Um, I paid 50 cents a piece for these, and there's a sourcing video. Uh, maybe I'll link it below where I got about 64 pieces for $34. So basically, uh, just a ton of stuff. Um, these sold for $15.96 plus shipping on top. So these were on sale. I had them higher. I think $19.95. I put all the glass on sale 20% off. Then somebody snatched these up. Um, these are the exact items that are in the boxing video or the shipping video on how to ship and box glass. It's these very items. So that's not a bad little profit. $2 into $15.96 and then the buyer paid for shipping. I believe this went by Priority Mail Region A. Uh, the next one is Solid Brass Door Kit. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I would not buy this again. It was something I picked up in a thrift store, and the reason I bought it because it was new in box. It said solid brass. It was big. Um, I, I looked up the comps at the time real quickly in the store using my eBay app on my cell phone, and I thought I found some in there for $25, $35, just a couple. They don't really sell that well. Um, maybe two or three in the last 90 days, which is not good. But I bought it anyways. I got the auction fever. It was five or six bucks. I think it was six bucks. So I bought it anyways. Sat in my eBay store for about a year. It finally sold for uh, $29.95. I do have best offer on stuff like this. They didn't send me an offer, which is amazing to me. They just paid up the price and they paid shipping on top. So those are the two items um, that have sold in the last, well, since the last video. A little disclaimer before I show the video. I don't have a sweet setup like Commonwealth Picker does. If you don't know his channel or haven't seen it, I encourage you to check it out. At the end of almost every video, he has a, a packaging part where he doesn't really speak. He has music playing in the background, but he has a camera from above that seems like it's on, hanging from his ceiling shooting straight down and then he does it in double speed and he packages a bunch of stuff and kind of shows you that i don't have that i had to take this tripod and, and prop it up on boxes kind of go down on an angle at my desk here so i apologize if the angle's off a little bit or or my body's blocking what i'm doing but um you kind of get the gist of it so uh, right here is the boxing video on how to box and ship glass Okay guys, I hope the audio comes in okay. I finally sold some glass.
So now I can do a boxing video and show you how I ship this. I sold these cute little 4 inch saucers and I'm going to box them up so you can see how to package glass. And there's a million different ways to do it. Everybody's got a different opinion. I'm not an expert. This isn't the only way, but this is how I do it. And I've had a pretty good success rate, except for the one that did break in the previous video. But especially things like saucers like this, they're pretty durable and strong. So never had a saucer break in shipping, but this is how I do it. I First I pick, first I have to say, and a man wanted to watch me package these up, so he's out here. So I'm going to put him right about there. So I print a packing slip, which I won't show the details, but you don't have to do that. So I have a pre-printed thank you on the packing slip here, and then I highlight it in yellow. And then it says, if you're happy with your purchase, please consider leaving a positive feedback. So I always include that in the box. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I'm a nurse, I taught us this in nursing school when it comes to doing dressing changes, is to be prepared ahead of time before you dig in. So for the tape, I'm going to make four, sorry for the noise, whenever I make noise, it mutes the sound a little bit. I'm going to make four or five little pieces of tape, and I'm going to hang them on the edge of the desk. You don't have to do this, but it helps. Then I purchased this, I don't even know what this is called, I think it's foam. It feels like stretchy, rubbery foam, but it comes in a roll like this. Got this at Sam's Club, pretty cheap. And I whenever I have multiples like this, I always sandwich them in between this foam. Um, because it gives it a cushion and it's thinner than bubble wrap so you don't end up with this giant basketball um, and it, it works really good so I put the first piece here and because the, you could cut these sheets down if you want but I just use the excess I fold it over put the next plate on like that put the next piece here the next piece on like that fold it over and then I put the next piece there so I kind of have it sandwiched like that all four little saucers then I fold it over like this fold it over like this fold it up like that and then tape it down and then so they don't go flying around I tape it like that I always have extra tape because I'd rather have too much tape than not enough so, so for now, we've got this package like this with all this foam padding, and this is the just the first step. Next step is I have this roll of bubble wrap, and I'm going to tear off a piece about three feet long. This just comes from experience. If it's too much, you obviously can cut it with scissors, and you don't have to use it all. So I take this new new creation, this this package here and I put it here and I got um, gonna need some more tape then I just kind of roll it up in a ball like this. it's coming through pretty good then it kind of looks like this and I take my tape Put it on there like that. It's kind of like a Christmas present almost. Just kind of fold it like this. Oops. Like that. And then this one the same thing. You just kind of fold it. And like this. And because I'm paranoid, I'll I'll use extra tape. But Probably don't need it, but you never know. That's it for the tape. So that's what it looks like. Not too thick now. Um, and there's nothing showing. The, the key to wrapping this up is make sure you can't touch the item inside from the outside. There's, there's no edges where I can go like this and poke it with my finger. So that anything that bounces against this is not going to touch the edge of any glass. So it's completely cushioned. Um, if you think it's overkill, this is about 
I'd say 28 cents worth of bubble wrap and foam. Not a lot, but it's, it's worth the investment. Now the bottom here, I don't know if it shows up on video. You can see the rim of the bottom one. Can't really touch it, but I can see it. So I think it's pretty good. So I'm going to put this in the box upside down. I have a, a Region A box here. And another helpful tip is when you put the item in a box, as far as sizing goes, make sure the item, even though it's in a giant ball like this of bubble wrap, make sure it cannot touch any of the sides of the box. So as you can see here, there's, there's gaps on, on all four sides. So that's very important. So I'm going to put it in upside down like this. Now the problem is this item is much smaller than the box, so we have to do what's called void fill and fill this in so this object doesn't move around in the box. This is a priority region A, so 15 pounds or less. If it fits, it ships, and then the rate is based on the zip code of the buyer. So as far as void fill, I don't use styrofoam peanuts or anything lightweight. Don't have to. I save that for my first class packages. So as far as void fill, I can use heavier items. You can see me. Heavier items like newspaper and shipping paper. So I'm going to do that next. Going to save time. I pause the video. So now I have my little box and I have all this void fill here. So you just pack it in. Let me show you like this. Make sure there's some on each side of the of the item. If you can avoid it, even though it's a giant ball of bubble wrap, if you can avoid it, avoid touching the sides, the four sides of the box if you can. So I'll show you when I'm done. Alright, so now this is the item in the middle. It's a big ball of bubble wrap and all around it is wadded up or balled up newspaper is void filled so this is not going to move side to side back and forth if at the post office in the semi truck or somewhere something hits the side of this box really hard it's going to impact this newspaper first hopefully um, so that's the void fill for around it now i have to do void fill on top because as you can see with the flaps they, they fall in and you want them to be level uh, at the top here Makes the post office nervous if the top of your box collapses. And uh, you don't want the item to get loose and bounce around inside the box for sure. Okay, so now i got my void fill. It's packed full. It's ready to ship. I'm going to tape it up and I'm going to send it out. Oh, wait a minute. No, you cannot go in this box. And a man tried to get shipped out. That's not going to work. Sorry for the noise too because it, it messes with the microphone. So... I got crazy amount of void fill here. If it's too much, you can take it out. But next thing I'm gonna do is put the packing slip on there. So I got my packing slip I lay on top. If you can see that. Close the flaps. Make sure Anaman's not in the box. So close the flaps. The last thing you're gonna do is the shake test. Nothing, nothing moves. I mean, it's in there tight. If it's too tight, you can take some newspaper out. If it's too loose or these flaps sink, you can... And they kind of did sink. You can add more newspaper like I just did. And there's nothing moving there at all. So now I'm going to tape it up. Um, I'm going to show you something with the taping. I should get a tape desktop tape dispenser because these guns drive me crazy. Uh, sorry again for the noise. One thing I want to say about these priority boxes is that it's great that they're free, but they're really not corrugated cardboard. They're very thin cardboard. So even if you tape it across the seam, and I always go across this way because I don't trust the tape, you'll notice here... If you can see it, there's like these little gaps all around. Um, just because this person paid up, and I'm not really sure about this, so I like to put little two inch pieces of tape on these corners too.
right, so I'm not going to bore you with the shipping label, but um, that'll go right on here. When I put the shipping label on there, even though it's a giant sticker on the front and back, I still put a piece of tape to hold it on because I've seen this sit in my car all day with humidity changes. That sticker can start to come off, so I don't want that to happen. Um, and I do have fragile handle with care stickers. That's personal opinion. You can put them one on the side, one on the bottom, one on the top. That might help. So, uh, so all I got to do now is print the postage and stick it on there, and she's ready to go. There's no movement. Um, it's much smaller than the box itself, and it's floating right in the middle. So that's how you package glass for shipping. So that's the boxing video. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope it was helpful. Of course, if the glass is different shapes, like a giant ceramic or porcelain coffee pot, it'll be a lot different the way you do it. Um, most glass that I sell is plates, dinner plates, salad plates, or saucer plates. So that would apply to that video you just watched. Um, and anything fragile, like a snow globe or anything like that, pretty much the principle applies to that um, that you just watched. So that's um, the boxing video on how to ship glass. And, you know, don't be that guy that I read about in these Facebook groups for eBay sellers and resellers and thrifters. Lately, for some reason, there's been horror stories posted on Facebook of people getting just crazy ones. One was uh, two glass bottles that had bubble wrap, but they were in a padded mailer. Don't ever, ever send glass in a padded mailer or a padded envelope. Just don't do it. I don't care what it is, um, how big or how small or how solid, if you think it's not going to break, always put glass in a box. And of course it was broken and they shared that on Facebook. The other one was a giant box, probably a large flat rate priority mailbox. And they, they bought like three plates and the, the seller used just a sheet of newspaper to pad the plates and then just set them in the box, which the items were much smaller than the box. So they just bounced around and splashed around in this box. And they showed a picture on Facebook and every plate was just shattered into a million pieces. They were shocked. They could not believe they didn't have one square inch of bubble wrap in there. Total amateur job. Uh, just, I can't believe people do that. So it's great that the people that watch my channel and the people I talk to on uh, YouTube Live and just kind of the YouTube community of family. A lot of people say they're nervous about purchasing glass because they don't know anything about glass or they're nervous about shipping it because they don't want it to break. Those are good things. You should be uh, a little reserved about that. If you don't know how to do it well, just don't do it at all. But So this video has uh, helped me with this mystery piece here, this little cast iron thing. Well, what sold on eBay? Unfortunately, only two items in the last four or five days and then how to ship glass and how to box it properly. So I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. Put your questions down in the comments down below. I'd love to answer questions. You can shoot me an email that's linked down below. If you wanna know what sells quickly, I have an Instagram, so follow me on Instagram. I'll tell you like within the hour when something sells, then you don't have to wait for the video to come out. And if I didn't mention it, please subscribe. If you're not a subscriber and you just found this video, hit that subscribe button and then you'll get notified when the next video comes out. So that's it, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment down below. See you next time.